Okay, to start the wash process here, you can see the 944 is, is really dirty, as I mentioned before. It's covered in tree sap and um, the rest of the stuff. There's actually a ladybug crawling on the door here that we'll safely remove and return back to the wild. Um, but we're just gonna uh, talk a little bit about the wash down process for the car because um, before you do paint correction, you wanna make sure that everything's nice and clean um, so that you're not wrestling with trying to get sap off of the hood while you're working a polisher and so on. So um, to start, obviously it's, it's washing. We uh, have our two bucket method. These are the refinery branded buckets, the wash bucket and the rinse bucket. And if you haven't done a two bucket method before, um, to explain it very quickly is, this is your clean water and this is the dirty water. And as you finish doing a pass on an area, um, you wanna rinse off that sponge or wash mitt before putting it back into your clean water because you don't wanna keep recycling and reapplying the dirt that you've removed from the car back onto the car in your next pass. So that's the importance of a two bucket method is rinse off the dirty, you know, the, the wash mitt after you've done it, wring it out so that all that dirty water and, and stuff that's caught in the fibers runs into that bucket. There's a grit guard on the bottom which traps the, you know, the, the biggest particles and keeps this water a little bit cleaner, but then go back to your wash water to, to keep going. Um, we're using Gion Bathe as kind of our favorite soap that we use regularly. Um, before we get into the wash mitt and so on, we're gonna use our pressure washer which has um, Gion foam in it. And the only difference with foam is it's just a very um, foamy, obviously, um, formulation of soap so that when you see us do the, the spray down with the foam cannon, it gives quite a thick lather of soap that helps start uh, you know, soaking the dried up contaminants and, and particles that are on the car just to make it that much easier when, when we're doing the, the wash and it gives, it, um, it gives us a little bit of a head start on the cleaning process and let the chemicals do their job rather than trying to fight it always with a, a wash mitt. Um, then once we've kind of got the majority of, of everything sort of washed off that can come off with soap, then we get into the more specialized chemicals which are the you know, it's the kickoff into the uh, chemical decontamination process. So we will use Gion iron and spray it on really all the panels, um, particularly with a car that's this dirty, to dissolve any um, iron-based uh, contaminants that may be stuck on the surfaces. You usually find it on the rear hatch, the front hood, and of course anything near the wheels because the, the brake pads and brake rotors um, kick off a lot of dust and a lot of that is metal based dust so a product like Gion Iron is really really good at dissolving that stuff. Then um, if we notice any sort of grease, oil, um, tar based stains or spots that's when we'll use Gion Tar um, and you use that just on a, a microfiber or you can spray it directly on the panel and wipe it with a microfiber but it does a really good job of rather than trying to fight a grease spot with soap which eventually will get you there it will bring it out in five seconds rather than three minutes of, of rubbing and, and so on. So once all that is done, now you're nearly at a clean state to begin your next step of, of cleanup and polishing, but we will also do the mechanical decontamination side, which is where you're actually using friction to remove um, embedded things from the surface and that's, uh, that's where we'll use either a clay mitt, a clay bar, or a clay pad. But the point is, is, is something that slides over the surface but catches um, any debris that's caught on the surface and it will shear it off and trap it within the pad or the clay itself and then you know, kind of rinse it off or clean it off and then continue doing the rest of the car. The end result of that is just a very clean surface um, where you, know, you shouldn't have any more dirt or debris on the car anymore. It's now a clean but marred up surface ready for paint correction. Um, and that's where we're, we're trying to get to with this. So um, I think that's it. The, the wheels, like we said, we'll do um, mostly with Gion Iron to, to get at the brake dust and you know, they tend to be some of the dirtier areas of the car. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get going. So what Mike is doing right now is um, just an initial rinse off um, using the, the pressure washer, not necessarily to add a lot of pressure to the equation, but 
it delivers a really good volume of water and in a nice pattern that, um, you know, it, it's not just a, a huge stream of water coming out, it's sort of a fan shape that helps um, knock off the, any debris that's sitting on the, the surface right now. So we'll do a full circle around the car to first just rinse off the worst of the debris before we do the foam cannon. So now we're doing the foam cannon, obviously from the pressure washer. This is the Gion foam that we were discussing. And we like using it, like I said, because it's quite thick and it clings to the surface and starts soaking into the, the dirt that's on the surface and just making it that much easier to, to clean up. You know, we might let it sit for just a couple of minutes for it to soak, um, but, uh, but you can see that it's just sort of a nice pre-soak um, again to, to soften up what remained after the initial, initial rinse off. Okay, now we're doing the wash off with the, with the normal Gion bathe soap. Um, and we've got a couple of microfiber mitts and this is a sponge with microfiber, it's the same material. Um, and we often alternate between using these uh, sponges and mitts versus um, we use a, a sheepskin wool mitt a lot just because it's very, very soft um, and it holds a lot of soapy water in it as well. So that's another favorite of ours um, as we're doing the, the wash off, but um, these, are, these are good too. You just have to make sure that you keep them nice and clean in between uses because um, you don't want any sand or dirt or anything like that staying in the, in the mid or in the fibers in between washes. This is a, a, an excellent first glimpse into you know, what the car will look like um, once it's been permanently restored um, with paint correction. Here Mike is using Gion Iron. Um, he sprayed it on the wheel faces and just around most of the problem areas in a general spritz over a lot of the car to see where um, the iron dissolving is going to happen. Um, y you see the product actually start to turn from basically clear to a fairly deep purple. And when you see that happening, that's a good indication for you to let it do its job for a little bit, um, but then give it a spray and then do it again. And you'll find the next time it'll continue dissolving, but you'll see less of that purple dripping off. And that just um, means that the iron is being consumed by the product and it's dissolving and dissolving and dissolving. Um, so, you know, sometimes we'll do some panels two or three times, sometimes four times. If it's, if it keeps lighting up red and, and keeps changing color very quickly, that means we know that there's a lot of iron contamination on the surface that, um, that is best dissolved off rather than, um, you know, waiting to try and get it with a clay bar. So now we're doing the final rinse down. Um, we are, uh, we finished dissolving the rust or, or dissolving the iron that was on the surface. Um, and you can see very clearly on areas of the car where the Gion iron product is turning purple. Um, so on the rocker panels, on the rear bumper, all over the front hood and front bumper, um, a little bit on the roof, but, but less so. But um, you can definitely see the areas where 
um, iron deposits find their way into embedding themselves onto the car and um, uh, you know it's always a great idea to, to get rid of that um, even before you start doing something like polishing. Um, and it also highlights the importance of having a good sealant, sealant on your car after, whether that be you know, a wax, a synthetic sealant, or ceramic coating. All of those things are designed to do a similar thing, which is prevent contaminants, being dirt, iron, acid, bird droppings, anything like that, from actually embedding themselves onto the clear coat of the car or onto the top surface of, this, of the car. So, um, you know, it's a good public service announcement to, to always keep the car well waxed and, and then you are likely not to have to do such a, a rigorous um, cleanup process or decontamination process in the future um, so long as it's always well protected. So here what we're doing is the clay bar process and we're using a Sonax clay pad um, which we've got for sale in our store as well. Um, and the reason we like it is because it does the same job as a, a natural clay, um, which is actually more, you know, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's kind of like a, a brick of plasticine or Play-Doh that you squish flat and then it sort of conforms to the, the shape of the body panel and it, it shears off any little bits of grit that are stuck on the surface. Um, the Sonax pad is, you know, six or seven inches in diameter. Um, so it covers a lot of ground. Um, and it, it behaves the exact same way. It's kind of got this rubbery clay-like surface on it. And you can, you know, do a hood uh, with the pad in, you know, a minute rather than probably three or four minutes or five minutes using a piece of clay that you have to keep turning and, um, and pushing flat again and so on. So, um, you know, it's a great sort of use of technology to, to replace something that was you know, a bit more cumbersome to use and the results are very, very similar. And one of these pads lasts for a very long time. I think you can do upwards of, I don't know, 50 or 75 cars before the surface starts um, falling apart a little bit and, and then that's your indication that you need to start um, getting a new one. But if they're well maintained, you keep it well rinsed and um, uh, you know, you're, you're using it properly. You can do many, many cars um, with one of these clay pads um, before you ever have to replace it. So the end result of this is going to be an extremely smooth surface. Um, you know, the clay pad or a clay bar doesn't do anything for gloss or shine or anything like that. It might remove a slight amount of oxidation, but that really that's not its main purpose. Its main purpose is to ensure that any little, um, you know, pieces of, of um, debris or anything like that are not stuck on the surface, creating a little pimple or a little, um, uh, a little sharp edge on that surface. It's now gonna be a very smooth feeling surface, um, which is great for us to begin paint correction with. Here we're doing the drying process. So we're using a, a Gion silk dryer towel, um, and it's the large one. And, and the general approach with that is not to rub the surface until it's dry, but you kind of drape the plush side of that towel onto the surface. You let it wick up for a couple seconds and then you can slowly drag it off or drag it in the next direction towards uh, another wet part of the surface. So that's um, you know, a fairly common mistake with, with drying is a lot of people really try and scrub the surface dry and that's where you introduce a lot of swirl marks and um, surface marring that you know, you end up having to polish out at some point in the future, but um, you know, using a, a good quality microfiber, one that's designed for drying, um, really helps you kind of reduce the amount of damage that you're causing during the drying process so that you know, you're not always looking at marred surfaces or, or um, swirl marked surfaces that you then always need to think, hey, maybe I should polish this out again and so on. You can keep a car going for years and years without developing swirl marks if you, you know, use the tools correctly, if you have a good technique with it, and, uh, and you're just sort of conscious of, of where damage happens and just try and minimize, um, you know, the, where you might be causing those um, by mistake. You know, they're often called love marks, and it's, you know, washing is sort of um, doing the right thing for the vehicle, right? You, you, you do want um, that car to be clean and that's the objective of it. And sometimes people cause damage to the vehicle um, 
with the best intentions, right? They were just trying to dry the car after doing a hand wash, which is an excellent thing to do. But, you know, like I say, there, there are the right tools and techniques in order to make sure that you minimize any amount of damage that you're causing during um, your maintenance wash process. Okay, here we are. We've got the car out on the main shop floor and it's clean now. We've finished the wash process. Um, and as it's dry, you can see that, you know, the oxidation is still obvious. Um, you know, it's very chalky on the surface. You know, it's kind of got that pink look to it. Um, you know, you can see a lot of sort of surface marks and um, almost a pattern of water drying on it. Um, so that's going to be our, our goal to remove. We, you know, once we're polishing under that, we'll probably do compounding first. Um, we'll, we'll do paint depth measurements first. Then we're likely to start with a compounding step to remove a lot of the oxidation. And then we will get into finish polishing, which is going to bring the, the depth of shine back um, and, you know, make it look a bit more like like the 993 here, um, but uh, you know we've got a little ways to go before before we're there. But certainly, you know, just being clean, it looks a lot better already.